Y'all, it just ain't right. Would you look at this? Welcome back to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. Once again, my name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you into everything you need to know about gemstones. Today, what we're going to talk about is one of the most important things in buying gemstones online. If you're going to be buying gemstones online or dealing with brokers that are in a place that aren't exactly close to you, then you need to be aware that our technology has limitations that directly apply to the price of gemstones. And what I mean by that is the first thing that impacts the price of a gemstone, and that is color. Now our fancy new smartphones are capable of doing some amazing things. They have sharp images, great film quality, all sorts of bright and dazzling colors, but the problem is even though the colors are bright and dazzling, they are not the same as what we see with our eye. So right here in my hand, I have a sapphire, an emerald, and a ruby. And the picture on my phone is not the same as what I see with my eye. And that is because of the camera and also the software in the phone that allows the display to show us color. There's different types of technology that display color and from phone to phone, company to company, model to model, that is different. Different phones have different quality cameras. They also have different quality displays. And the software that allows the display to show us color is also different. And those all contribute to the difficulties that we as gem dealers have. Because once again, color is the single most important factor in the price of a gemstone. A decent enough camera, which most of these smartphones have these days, can show you the quality of clarity inside of a stone. But what it cannot do is show you the true color. And this comes back to something that we call color space. Those of you who are interested in graphic design and website design will have heard of color space before because color space is basically what your computer is able to display. The average phone or the average computer monitor is only able to display typically what we call RGB, which is red, green, and blue. And so in order to display color, it just mixes those three colors. But the complexity and intensity of those colors is not the same that our eye is able to perceive. Like screens on technology, our eye also mixes colors in order to create all of the visible colors. We have rods and cones in our eyes. Each of those produces a type of pigment that the rest of our system is able to read, and that creates what we perceive as color. So again, it's mixing of color. But the pigments that the rods and cones in our eyes are able to create are much more dynamic and much more deep than what the phone is able to do at this time in history. Which is both exciting and frustrating. Frustrating mostly for those of us that are dealing in gemstones, but also exciting to know that there are new frontiers out there. Get on it, physics nerds! But let's talk a little bit more about this color space thing. Here's a diagram for you. The outline of this rainbow area is what the eye is capable of seeing. And inside of that, you'll see that there are different triangular areas. And these are different color spaces. Those triangular areas are what technology is able to show. Certain cameras, certain phones, certain other devices have more advanced color spaces available to them and displays that are more capable of showing these colors than the average phone or computer monitor. Graphic designers, photographers, people that deal with color on a daily basis and are very sensitive to it because their job is on the line and it's their passion, they pay more money for a better quality monitor and higher quality technology to display these colors. That means that the color space available to them is more complex and covers a broader range of colors than the average person's phone is able to see. Even if they doctor up the photo with a whole lot of studio voodoo, you're still not going to be able to see the same thing that they see unless you have the same quality of monitor. There are two things that you need to rely on when you're buying stones. Number one, who are you dealing with? If they can describe the color in a way that you are confident is correct, then you can trust them to buy the stone. Even if they send you the best quality photography, you are not going to be able to see the true color of that stone, especially with emeralds. This green area in the color space is one of the most complex and difficult to photograph color areas inside of color space. Most of the photographers of gemstone and jewelry will constantly complain about green because it's so hard to get it accurate. Remember, I was talking about different phones have different cameras and also different software. So if you look at the same picture that I took on my camera with these two phones, then you're gonna see two different photos. And that's because the display on these two phones is different. If I take a photo from this phone and I send it to this phone, it's going to look differently on both phones. I can't stress this enough, it is the same file. The information on the file is the same. It should look the same, but because these two phones are different, the image is going to be different. If I use the DSLR that I'm recording on right now and I take a picture of the stone with that, it's still not the same as the stone because once again, the color space available to this camera is not the same as the human eye. Smartphones are capable of taking incredibly beautiful photos, but oftentimes that's because they put different color overlays. They enhance certain colors in a way that when you're buying a gemstone can be dangerous. If they make the green on the emerald more vivid, you could be talking about a several hundred dollar or several thousand dollar jump in price simply because of this devil machine. So beware. 
Now, I don't want to scare you too much, but I really want to stress to you the importance of working with people that you can trust, and then asking them a lot of questions. When you see pictures from them, make sure to ask plenty of questions about the color itself. If you're looking for a specific color and you don't want other kind of modifying colors, then make sure you ask about those. If you're buying an emerald, you can ask them, does it tend towards blue or is it more of a true green? Is the green electric or is the green more deep? Search for adjectives to get to that color that you have in your mind. But really, as with many trades, it's very important to get a lot of experience looking at stones. When you've seen many stones in person, you have an idea of what's possible in the world. And so when people start talking about these colors, you can get a feel of what palette they're going for. Really, what are they trying to describe? Blues are also that way. If there's a touch of gray or if the blue goes a little bit too dark, then that's going to impact the price a lot. So being able to know from the broker that you're dealing with or the dealer who owns the stone, getting them to describe it and tell you truthfully whether or not that touch of gray is there or whether or not it tends towards dark. And if you trust that dealer, then you can buy with confidence. But you can't always trust the picture from the phone. Video's the same. Let's review real quick. Today we've been talking about color space and what technology can and cannot show us in the way of color. Different phones and different cameras are going to have different lenses, and so the colors that they can capture are different. And then the software that the device uses to encode that color is also different. The displays on each phone and camera are different. Therefore, you're going to see those colors differently. And since color is the number one most important factor in the price of a gemstone, it's very important to be aware of. Technology is currently not able to show us the same thing that our eyes are able to see. So working with brokers that you trust and asking lots of questions about the color and getting them to describe it truthfully is essential when buying stones that you don't get to hold in your hand. Once again, if you've got any questions or comments about color space or anything that I've talked about today, please leave them in the comment section below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell all of your friends about it. And until next time, I'll say bye-bye.